Normally when we see the Sansui name, we associate it with high-end stereos. We don't associate it with this. This is a little TV made by Orion carrying the Sansui name. It's got a VHS player built in. And if it looks like I found it at the side of the road, well, that's because I found it at the side of the road. Let's uh, check it out and see if it works. First things first. We give it a clean. Make this thing kind of look a bit presentable before actually powering it up and getting into it. Now these things were actually quite popular with the RVing crowd because not only could they operate on 120 volts, but they also had a 12 volt plug. So these things could be you know, put in the motorhome or trailer, dragged around the country with you, and then when you stop for the night, even if there was no TV reception, well, you could go to your favorite campground and rent a VHS, because back in the day, you could rent VHS tapes just about anywhere, and or carry your tapes with you and play a movie. You know, for those nights where you're stuck in the campground and it's pissing with rain and you're not going to be outside, well, you could sit inside and watch TV. They were actually quite popular. And uh, back in the days when uh, when I used to do RVing, when I had an RV, okay, it wasn't mine, it was my parents' RV, but back in the day when they had an RV and I would take it, I, let's just say I would borrow it, well, we had a little TV just about the same size as this with a VHS player. In fact, it might have even been a Sansui, I forget, but they had a small one like this and it was mounted up on the wall and, you know, this was before flat panel TV. So these were actually kind of cool. Um, I'm not even going to turn this thing on until I pull the back off it and make sure that there's nothing uh, crawling around inside there. As I say, I found it at the side of the road, so good question what we might find on that circuit board. So let me pull the back off it and we'll, do it, take a, we'll examine this thing, check it out, make sure that it's not going to go boom when I plug it in, and then we'll try it out and see if it even works. Okay, got the screws out of the back. The back should just lift off like that. Revealing. The board for the TV and the VCR. Now as you can see, basically what they did on a unit like this is they basically took a TV and they mounted the board on the side. All the electronics for the television are on the side. That way the VCR player and recorder could go on the bottom. And looking down here, I don't see anything. I don't, it doesn't look like water's gotten into this thing, which is good. It actually doesn't look to be in bad shape. Hmm. Got a loading belt on here. This is a, an area of trouble. A loading belt is a real simple matter to replace it. You just take it off and put a new one on. What could be simpler than that? I give them one thing. They designed that part of it well. Uh, cleaning the heads on it though was a little more of a challenge because you had to remove the chassis to get at it to uh, actually get at the the deck itself there's a couple screws that had to come out to do that but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try this thing first and see if it even does anything see if this thing works power on we get a light do we have a picture Hey, look at that. We have a picture. It actually works. Unbelievable. Let's see if it'll play a tape. So I have my color bars tape here. Automatically plays. Oh, okay. Does not appear to play. It uh, doesn't appear to... Well, it just shut off. So let's see why, why it's not playing. I have a sneaking suspicion it's the loading belt. Let's just take a look. We'll put the tape in. Oh yes, the loading belt is slipping. Give it a bit of a hand there to complete the loading cycle. And we have a bad picture. I don't know if you saw it run there for a few seconds, but it didn't play very well. So first, my tape is stuck. So 
so much for this tape. I should have put a garbage tape in here instead of a good one. Let's see if I turn it on the side whether it'll whether it'll come out. Ah! Well, my tape got a bit crunched there, didn't it? Oh well. Oh yeah, it's got wet too. Some of that Windex I put on here to clean it must have dripped into the set itself. Must have dripped into the mechanism because there was a bit of a bit of moisture on this tape. Oh well, it's a short tape. It's a little T30. I think I can make more color bar tapes considering I do have a color bar generator. And I have a number of machines that are properly set up for recording tapes. That's where this one came from. Okay, let's see why this thing's not working. Let's pull the VCR portion apart and see if I can make, make it work. Oh, I just noticed a paper clip dropped out of it when I turned it on its side. What else are we going to find in this thing? What would have been funny is if that paper clip shorted something on the board when it was turned on and caused some major sparks. Now that would have been funny, but uh, okay, let's shut off the power on this thing first. That noise you heard was just a cable falling on the floor, by the way. Okay, to get the VCR out on this thing, there's a couple screws back here. I'm going to use the, uh, the long screwdriver with all the pitting on the end from when I've severely overloaded this thing with high voltage. This is the one I've been used a few times for blowing things up. We'll take out that screw there and I think that's the one that has to come out and then the chassis slides out. No, there's a couple more, I think. It's been a long time since I've opened one of these things up. It's been many years. Actually, it just it does slide up. I just have to lift. I have to lift for, and pull forward at the same time. We used to hate these combination units because they're always a pain in the butt to work on. Like one of these units when they came into the shop, a normal VCR head cleaning was like 30 bucks. And when anybody came in with one of these, it was like $75 minimum. And they'd be like screaming, well how come it's only $30 to clean my VCR and you're charging me $75 to clean this VCR? They would, they would categorize it as a VCR. If only they knew the amount of work required to get into one of these things compared to a VCR. Unplug the speaker. There's a latch down here that you lift. And then this board can slide out. And once that board can slide out, we're going to unplug the yoke now. And I can unbundle the high voltage wires, the focus leads. That way I can pull the TV board out of the way. And now I can lift the VCR portion of it. And this is what was required anytime someone wanted to service one of these machines. You basically had to pull the whole thing apart, including, in many cases, taking off the CRT socket in order to get the VCR out so that it can be serviced. Now we have the VCR out. See all this was required just to clean the heads on these stupid these stupid things. So these were frustrations for technicians, especially ones that were like me, under pressure all the time to get things done because there was the shop that I worked at, there was always so much work. Okay, now there should be one more screw at the back here that holds this shield, which is kind of rusting a bit, isn't it? Any, any of you guys have any idea why there's a 
a rusting shield on top and this one is not okay this one here is steel and that's so that pulses from the flyback transformer and the pitcher tube won't be picked up by the sensitive video amplifier so they've got double shielding otherwise you could get interference from the CRT in the pitcher should be two more screws to hold this cover up. One on this side, I think it's this one. And there's the top off. Now I can hear it now from people that are going to give me thumbs down because I know I'll get a handful of thumbs down and I'll get the smart ass snide remarks what are you doing fixing a piece of junk like that? The thing's not worth anything. And that's very true to most people. But you know what? When this thing's working, I'll put an ad up on Craigslist and it will go. It will sell. I don't have any concern about unloading this thing. Because every piece of equipment that I fix, that I get given to me, or I find, Every piece of equipment that I repair, I put it on Craigslist and it's gone. Um, so there is a market for this old stuff. I don't have a use for it, but somebody else might. Especially somebody who may have a bunch of tapes. You know, maybe they've inherited a bunch of Disney tapes or something and they've got a little kid. Uh, okay, we've got all these tapes. Or, a lot of times it's it's people that had the Disney tapes when they were kids and their parents kept all these tapes and now they've given them to their kids and you know for the grandchildren and they, they give them tapes and they have no way of playing them because nobody has a VCR anymore all of a sudden one of these combination units pops up and they think oh how cute I'll get that for the kids room then I can put these old Disney tapes on so I don't have any concern about getting rid of this thing. I might not get any money for it because I usually give most of this stuff away or sell it dirt cheap, but um, it will go. So this belt was worn for one. Let me see if I can find one that will work. I have another one. The new one is slightly smaller than the original, so I have a feeling that this new one will be just fine. So I'll put the new belt, which is not a new belt at all. It's one I pulled out of something else, but. It's still fine. So you guys know where that goes anyway, but I'll just turn it around so you guys can see where it goes. It just goes on the pulley back here. It goes around that pulley and over this motor pulley. There you go, that's the belt. Now obviously before I power this thing up I have to reconnect the CRT socket. And I have to reconnect the yoke. I don't need to reconnect the degaussing circuit because it doesn't matter. It's not going to be uh, left like that. I just want to be able to test this thing to see whether it's going to work. And this time I'm going to put a tape in that I know is trashed. That I don't care if it gets trashed some more. Now I know, probably don't need to remind you guys, but I will anyway. Uh, this is high voltage on the set. There's about 30,000 volts on that wire. And I'm turned off by the way now. But there's about 30,000 volts on that wire that goes to the CRT. And there's about 10,000 volts on the focus lead here that goes to the back of the CRT. And several hundred volts on these pins here. So, when you're powering this set up, keep your fingers away from the flyback. The bottom of it is shielded so you're not going to touch the connections on the bottom, but there's high voltage on, on all this board. So keep your fingers clear when you're powering one of these sets up, when the back's off of it. Okay, power on. Now, i got to find the buttons on this thing. That's the power button. Let's uh, observe what happens when I put this broken tape into here. That part works. It pulls the tape out 
and threads it up. Now let's just try pressing play wherever play is. There's play. Oh, interesting. It's moving. Is there a picture on this thing? Well, I don't see a picture at all. Let's try a different tape. It's not eating now, so let's just try the color bar tape again and see whether it does anything. Oh, wait a minute. I pressed the button over here. That was the record button. Let's try pressing the play button, which is that one. Oh, we have a picture. I just erased TV Ray Vaughn. It's okay. It wasn't much on there of him anyway. It wasn't like it was the whole concert, but it works. Let's go back to the color bar tape. Now, I wonder why that thing ate tape. It might have been that uh, when I cleaned the screen, some of my cleaner, my Windex that I sprayed on the screen, dripped down and got into the mechanism and then when the tape went in it got on the tape. Maybe that's why it ate the tape. Because it's not eating the tape now. Now that tape, oh there's a sticky part, that's why. That tape's got something sticky on it, that's why it's stuck at that particular point. We'll just get it past that point where the tape's sticking. Yeah, we have, uh, I guess we have some debris on the tape there that uh, it, it would stick. It's actually got accurate color too, looking at the color bars. The uh, color appears to be very accurate. Okay, I think I think we can put this thing together. Oops, that was the power button. Let's try hitting the right button here to to eject the tape. Where is it? It's this one down here. Yeah, it's certainly not eating now. I think what happened was there was something sticky got on the tape, and uh, it just got stuck because initially at that point of the tape it wouldn't budge. I think probably what happened is some dirt or debris got on there from when I cleaned it and something dripped into the into here and uh, when I put the tape in it was it was probably on the flap and when I put the tape in it uh, contaminated the tape and left a sticky residue on the tape which caused the tape to stick but it needed a belt anyway because the belt was was worn out so we'll just give the heads a clean before putting the, the top back on it again just use some paper get some paper soaked with isopropyl alcohol and then just place it up against the side of the drum and turn the drum counterclockwise so like that making sure you can actually feel the heads as they pass between your finger and the paper a little bit of dirt on here not much wasn't that dirty so the audio head is right here. Top side of the part of the head is for the audio and the bottom here is where the control track is recorded. This one's the audio erase head and the full erase head is over here. So now we'll clean all the posts that the tape touches. controller controller is actually quite dirty capstan shaft I'm turning it with my other finger to get all sides of the capstan shaft and there you go yeah there's a fair bit of uh, dirt on this one Pinch had quite a bit. I want more people guide here. 
Okay, this unit is now ready to have the shield attached again. Shield is very important on these combination units because of the uh, interference that they will receive from the TV circuitry. So if you fail to put the shield on, you're going to end up with a really bad picture. Again, due to the design of these things, you pretty much have to take, you have to unplug the CRT to get clearance in here so you can get the cover back in place. And of course I did it wrong. I didn't hook the, uh, the front underneath these two little tabs. These two little tabs go underneath like that. Okay, we'll reconnect the CRT again just to make sure that everything works before I put the back on, before I put everything back in place. And there we have a picture. Everything's working. Everything looks good. We'll take the tape out now and install the chassis. Once again, I'm going to disconnect the CRT socket and I'll disconnect the yoke plug over here just to give me a little more clearance so that I don't have things quite as tight. That way I can turn the whole chassis around to reinstall it. You got to remember, you got to remember that uh, you have to open up this little door on the front here as you slide the chassis and otherwise uh, it won't open the door to eject the tape. chassis does side into little tracks so we open the door up at the front it should just drop right in as long as they get it lined up and I think that's in place it seems to have dropped in and then we have to do the same thing for the, for the circuit board on the side here there's some little tracks on the side here little feet down here that go into a slot on the board. There's a slot right there. Drop that foot into the slot. Line up. And then just slide it in place until it locks into place. When you get it all the way in, there'll be a little tab here that's going to drop into place. And it'll lock in once you get it. There we go. Now it's locked in place. Now I can proceed to reconnect the yoke and reconnect the picture tube and then redo my wire ties to hold the wires out of the way like that and we have the degaussing circuit to plug in and it goes underneath the tube like that it plugs into this connector on the back and we have the audio that plugs in down here to the edge of the board this is for the speaker that's what this little blue um, wire tie that is attached 
to the back of the deck. That's what that's for. That's to hold that wire out of the way so it doesn't get caught up in this gear here. Okay, we have another screw that goes down to hold the VCR in place. This is a uh, plastic screw that threads down through here. Okay, units are now ready for testing again. Plug the power cord back in. Turn on the power. And play the tape. And we have bars and tone. Final test before sending it on its way. There it is. I like this digital auto tracking. Yeah, right. Sure it is. Thanks for watching.